recently at one of the last Tesla uh, shareholder meetings, or it might have been the um, the autonomous day, Elon talked about how he, he kind of jabbed the traditional OEMs because they hadn't yet come up with a, a competitive range EV uh, to surpass their 2012 Model S 85 kilowatt hour pack at 265 miles. Why, why are we not seeing more competitive range with with EVs from traditional OEMs? Because they're buying them from somebody else. Okay. I, I think that's a... Uh, I mean, um, I think you've got... Is that the package yeah. from that thing? Yeah. Well, in there, um, I, know, I think like page 50 or something like that, there's a... Uh, there's a little doodad that talks about uh, about the the electric motors and mm -hmm. and it talks about how um, how um, where is this thing? Is it the, the just the that big cost book. of the drivetrain? No, it's the it's a it's an analysis of how good they've done, how well they've mm -hmm. done, and um, and quite frankly, when you look at it, um, here it is. I'll, I'll this, put this up on the video too yeah. so they can see it on the screen. But, I mean, here's the guys with the points. Mm -hmm. And who are they? Oh, the Jaguar I Pace, who created basically um, a kludge, but yeah. they, they went and got different people to, to yeah. help them out because they didn't have the internal. But their people stood over and watched them over sure. their shoulder. And they get um, 367 points. And here's the. Um, um, that, well, they lumped all the Teslas together, <laughs> which I think was a was a cheat because mm -hmm, the, yeah. the S and the X would drag the three down. Sure. But uh, but they're at three sixty three. Mm -hmm. And then let's look at the Chevy Bolt. Uh, Chevy Bolt. Eighty nine. Eighty nine points. That's it. So the next the the one that's uh, that's right below the uh, the Tesla, is uh, the BMW i three, and that's one hundred and seventy two. So to go from you know uh, three hundred and sixty something down to eighty nine, <laughs> that that mean that's very telling. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a very telling uh, chart. So, um, so do you think a, a key? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick this question over to Mark uh, since it's sort of battery related. Do you think that in order to be competitive with Tesla's range, you have to build your own, create your own chemistry, produce your own battery cells? That would be a 10-year project. Okay. So, you know, there are going to be leaders in the battery industry, and the you, a lot of the electrochemistries are under patents. They're going to have to be licensed. Whoever comes out on top is probably going to win. But just due to the sheer volume of batteries that are going to be needed in the next five years, you, you know, you basically have three or four mm -hmm. major battery companies that are out there. You've got Panasonic, you've got Samsung, you've got LG, and you've got CATL out of China, and those are the big four. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is going to be trying to find a niche in there. Uh, probably the outlier is BYD. They make their own batteries and they make their own cars. So they're in a position, if they can get everything put together, to really kind of lead because I can make the car, I make the batteries, I've mm -hmm. got everything in-house, but are we going to do it well? That would be the question. There, there's... At the end of the day, if you're going to see somebody come up with something new, it's going to be a solid state battery. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be some way of controlling lightning. The, <laughs> the, uh, the super you know, capacitors. Super capacitors. Yeah. Right. Um, that's that's where that's where if I was going to put money in uh, advanced research, that's where I'd stick it. I wouldn't. The next I'm, iteration try of it. energy. Like like yeah. Mark just said, why would I ever want to try and figure out how to do new chemistry as opposed to uh, as opposed to Panasonic or something? It's ridiculous. You, you can't compete with these guys. They've been doing it forever. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't look at that. I'd be looking at what can we do that would be a step change. And uh, I'm uh, and I'm positive that Elon Musk is also looking at that. He's got to be. I mean, uh, he's often been fond of supercapacitors for many many years, and yeah. so that's one of the reasons why I think the Maxwell acquisition is quite interesting because yeah. it's not just the, the the dry the dry battery electrode tech, but the super caps is something that Maxwell has done since yeah. they first started the company in the 80s or 90s. The dry battery electrode technology is 
game changing. I think if it comes to pass, they they can put it in a car. But I've been talking to people about supercapacitors and battery packs for a long time mm -hmm. because one of the issues with the battery is when I step on the potentiometer, yeah. Yeah. the <laughs> throttle, the yeah. accelerator, yeah. Yeah. Throttle. not the gas pedal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, I, when, I, when I step on that hard, I'm pulling a lot of energy sure. out of those batteries. Yeah. And then when I brake hard, I'm pulling a lot of energy out of the regen, but the batteries can't take it fast enough. Mm -hmm. and the batteries get really stressed when you try to pull it out too much. So if I had super capacitors that I could use as a cushion, so when I need energy quickly, pull it from mm -hmm. those super capacitors and then fill the super capacitors back up with the battery slowly. And then when I break, I can capture more of that regen energy into the supercapacitors faster. And I, I think that just makes logical sense yeah. because now all of a sudden I've got a sponge in front of my main energy yeah. source and I'm not stressing it so much. So, But we've already seen that. We, we just did that. a robot system uh, for warehousing and, uh, and they came up with a brilliant idea uh, to, uh, to have uh, uh, capacitors Mm -hmm. And uh, and battery combination that uh, that gives them exactly what Mark was just talking about. I can get a rapid charge because you've got to go up and down and all around and it moves really mm -hmm. quick. It's very very fast inside there. Um, and uh, so what what do I do when I have to go to the top row? I mean, there's they're up about 20 feet. Well, I'm going to charge it. Where do I charge it to? I have no battery except that. I mean, it's running in a 220. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be going straight into that uh, that capacitor. Capacitors, like like Mark just said, acting like a sponge, sucks it up and then meters it out to the battery. So a this is technically time. feasible. There's already a pathway oh, yeah, yeah. to do this right done. now. Yeah. If, yeah. Done right now. So so this, I would say there's probably a good chance if it's technically possible. There's a good chance that that Tesla's already got this in one of their vehicles. I mean, the Roadster is the one that everyone talks about being the sort of natural fit because you have that intense acceleration. Mm 